Hopefully everybody can hear the sound on this video, otherwise they're looking at this sign and trying to figure out how to get their sound working. Uh, this is a lesson on 3.4, section, or er, 4 of chapter 3, chapter 3, section 4, of the chapter 3 study guide in geometry. Now this is just a review of how to find slope. Slope of a line basically is a number that tells you how the line is tilting. Some slopes are really steep. They're associated with uh, large um, positive numbers um, or very extreme negative numbers. Um, or, and some slopes are very shallow um, and they're associated with smaller positive numbers and smaller negative numbers. So slope is basically the ratio, that means fraction, of vertical change to horizontal change. between any two points on a line. So negative slopes are going to start high up on the graph on the left and as you go reading the graph across this way are going to fall or go down. Positive slopes start low on the graph, and as we read the graph going across, they're going to go up. And there's two more. Undefined slope is what you get when you try to define a slope of a vertical line. Vertical lines go straight up and down. There is no number that we can use. So we simply say that it's undefined. We use the word undefined in order to identify the slope. Horizontal lines have zero slope because the top number is always going to be zero. There is no movement up or down because they're completely flat. So the top number on the ratio would be zero. And no matter what the bottom number is, zero divided by anything is still zero. So that's why the slope of all horizontal lines is zero. So, let's go to the next page and do a few examples. So if I want to find the slope of the line that passes through this point right here and this point right here, what they've given me is a few numbers to work with. They have x and y value of this point and they have an x and y value of this point. So, I'm going to call this x sub 1 and y sub 1. I'm going to call this x sub 2 and y sub 2 because this is the first point that I see as I go across the graph and that's the second one. So these little numbers are called ordinal numbers, order that I see them in. It doesn't matter if you see one point before the other. Um, it doesn't really matter which ones you call x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2. You'll get the same answer either way. So there's a formula for finding slope which reads that um, if you take y sub 2 minus y sub 1 and divide that by x sub 2 minus x sub 1, you'll get your answer. So let's see if we can do that. If I have this slope, uh, y sub 2 is 3, subtract y sub 1 which is 1, over x sub 2 which is 5, subtract x sub 1 which is 2, I get 2 divided by 3, and that's the slope of the line. It's positive, it goes up two units for every three units that it goes to the right, hence the slope of two-thirds. Or this one, you can see, if we count the squares, it goes up one, two, three, four units for every one, two, three, four, five units it goes to the left. Up represents the top number in our slope, it's a vertical movement, positive 4. Left is the bottom number, left is a negative movement of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the leftward movement on this graph is negative 5 between these two points. So the vertical over the horizontal
movement is positive 4 over negative 5. Now, you could do it the other way, as I did it in, in example number 10. You could use the formula um, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, and you would get the same answer. Let's see. If I call this x sub 1 and y sub 1, and this x sub 2 and y sub 2, let's see, I'd start with negative 4 minus 0 over 3 minus negative 2. So that would be negative 4 over, these two would be plus a positive, 5. So is negative 4 fifths the same as negative 4 fifths? Yeah. You can put the negative sign anywhere you want. You can put it on the top, make it look like that. You can put it in the middle, so it'd be 4 fifths with a negative sign in the middle, or you can put it in the bottom. They're all the same fraction, negative 4 fifths. How about this line? Well, this is a special type of line. It's horizontal. And all horizontal lines have a slope of 0. Now, if you didn't remember that, you could do uh, uh, use the method of the formula, x sub 1 and y sub 1, x sub 2 and y sub 2, and see what you get. But what happens with horizontal lines is the top number always ends up being 0 because the y values are always the same. You have 3 minus 3 on the top and 2 minus negative 3 on the bottom. Top number being 0 doesn't matter what the bottom number is. 0 divided by anything is still 0. So the only other th one that I wanted to talk about for sure on this page was number 15. This is a vertical line. When you try to solve this, x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, we don't get a number answer. It's not possible to get a numerical answer for this slope. If you try to do it in your calculator, your calculator, calculator will give you an error message. Negative 5 divided by 0. You cannot divide by 0. This division is not possible. So that's why when anyone asks you what the slope of a, vertical, of a vertical line is, you just simply say it is undefined. So at the bottom of the page, you can simply do what we did up here. If you want to say that you can start by identifying each one of these points as x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, or y sub 2, and then go ahead and use the formula that we've been using. And then just think about what happens when you come up with a zero value. If the zero value is on the top, the answer is zero. If the zero value is on the bottom, your answer is undefined. parallel lines are going to be the same uh, because remember what a slope number does it tells you what kind of tilt the line has so if your line is you know tilting in the same direction as another line that means it has the same slope and the word here is vertical any two vertical lines have are parallel This is a fun little activity, which uh, find the slope of each line, which lines are parallel. So you could use the formula y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 for each one of these uh, points. You have two points on line k, so you could find the slope of that. You have two points on line k sub 2, so this is k sub 1, line k sub 2, find the slope of that. And then you have two points on line k sub 3, find the slope of that using this formula. And then if there's any two slopes that are the same, then those two lines would be parallel. Now, there's a faster way to do it, of course, using the counting theory with squares. For example, k sub 1, you'd have to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 squares in order to move right 1. So k sub 1 would have a slope of positive 5 for your vertical movement, 
and positive 1 for your rightward movement, so you'd have a slope of 5. Uh, K sub 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, moves up 6 units, and then one for every unit, one it moves 1 to the right. So positive 5 is an upward movement, and right is also a positive movement. So uh, 6 divided by 1 would be 6. Those two lines are not parallel. They're not exactly moving in the same direction. It kind of looks like they should, but it's just not quite exactly the same. How about the last line, k sub 3? If it moves up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units for every 1 unit it moves to the right, up is a positive movement, One is uh, right is also a positive movement. So k sub 3 would be a vertical movement up, up 5, positive, and 1 to the right, positive which means you get a slope of 5. So I would say that k sub 1 and k sub 3 are parallel because you can see their slopes match. last postulate is slopes of perpendicular lines. Slopes of perpendicular lines, when you multiply the two numbers together, you get negative 1. So that's what the word product means. It means multiply. Or that there's been a multiplication. A product is a multiplication. So if you have a horizontal line and a vertical line, so straight up and down line, vertical, and straight side to side line, horizontal, those two are going to form a perfect 90 degree angle. So they're called perpendicular lines. So what we can do is we can determine if two lines are exactly forming a 90 degree angle by finding the two slopes first, then multiplying those two numbers together second, and seeing if the answer is negative 1. If it's not negative 1, then they're not perpendicular. So let's see. I would say line AB, we would have to move up 1, 2, 3, 4 units for every 2 units we move to the right. So uh, this line has a slope of uh, 4 upward movement and 2 horizontal movement, which will give me a slope of 2. This line moves up one unit for every two units is move, it moves to the left. So that one has a slope of positive one in the upward direction and then left would be negative. So if I take the slope of the first line, that's this one that goes through points AB, and I multiply that by the slope of the second line, the one that goes through points C and D, if I multiply across the top two times one is two, across the bottom I just have negative two, and positive 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. So, yes, these two lines are indeed perpendicular. When you find the slopes and multiply them together, you get negative 1. So I would say yes. Are they perpendicular? Yes. Um, number 8. Uh, this line here, I'd have to move up 1, 2, 3 units for every 1 unit I move to the right. So the slope of this line would be 3 over 1, or just 3. On this line, I'd have to move up 1 unit for every 1, 2, 3 units I, units I move to the left. Remember, left is a negative movement. So that would be positive 1 for the vertical and negative 3 for the horizontal. So if I take these two slopes, 3 is the slope of this line, and 1 over negative 3 is the slope of that line, and I multiply them together, as you can see, I get the same result as example 7. The product of those two slopes is negative 1. So I've demonstrated that they are perpendicular. And then finally, if I have this line and this line, um, C and B are on this line. I don't have to necessarily use A. Pick any two points on this line. I'm going to pick C and B. I would have to move up 1, 2, 3 units in the positive direction to move 2 units to the right. That's also a positive direction. 
So the vertical movement here would be positive 3, and the horizontal movement would be positive 2 for this line. This line I'd have to move up 1, 2, 3 units. For every 2 units I move to the left, left is a negative movement, so that would be positive 3 because I'm going up, and then negative 2 because I'm going to the left. So if I multiply the two slopes together, I get 9 over negative 4, and those do not divide out to be negative 1, do they? No. So these two lines are not perpendicular. They do not form a perfect 90 degree angle like the other two pairs of lines do.